Yeah, I'm not sure why, but every time I read the name Luscious Velvet, for some reason I get this image of some character from like a 1970s television show, and it's some cop or detective who is larger than life, and he wears this big velour velvet jacket around, and he likes to press the rules a little bit, but then the department lets him slide because he solves all the crimes, and so when he goes and all the cops and all the bad guys give him the nickname Luscious Velva because he's smooth with the ladies, things like that. And I'm not sure why I think that, because it has nothing to do with whiskey. Hello and welcome to Lacorious George. My name is George, and today I'm going to be guiding all of you through my curiosities with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's rare release from Distillery 64, Luscious Velvet. So aside from my divergent thinking in the beginning there, I am very excited to actually take a look at this whiskey in a little more depth. So this bottle is one of the festival releases this year that was put out by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So every year they put out different bottles and releases in concert with all the whiskey festivals that go on in the different regions over in Scotland. When I saw Distillery 64 was getting released as part of the festival this year, I knew I had to grab a bottle. Distillery 64 happens to hold a place near and dear to my heart. Uh, when I went and visited Scotland, out of all the bottles that I tried there, Distillery 64 happened to be one of the first pours that I had. Aside from that, they do put out some really, really good whiskey. So one of the things with this distillery is you're not going to find a whole lot of bottles out there that are put out just by the distillery themselves. Uh, most of which you're going to find are independent bottlers, such as the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, as well as others. Uh, that's because they're owned by you know a very large whiskey conglomerate, and you're going to find most of their distillate goes into whiskey blends and Scotch blends that come out of the region. You know, most notably Johnny Walker. So when you can get your hands on something like this. I get excited because you're gonna get to try something that usually you're not gonna find all over the place and most of the time you don't get to have as a standalone. Okay, so listen, I know I keep saying Distillery 64 and I don't say the name of the actual distillery, but I like to keep the magic alive a little bit. Just let me have a little fun with it. If you wanna really figure out what Distillery 64 is, if you don't know already, you can just go online and Google it. It's one of the worst kept secrets out there. All the different numbers and the distilleries that go along with them with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So let's go ahead and read the stats off this bottle so we can get into actual tasting. So as I mentioned, Distillery 64, rare release. So although most of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society releases are single casks, this one actually happens to be a blend between a few of them. So it's one of 2,119. Uh, the name is Luscious Velvet. It's a 15-year-old single malt coming out of Speyside. So it's Speyside Whiskey Festival this year. It's coming to us at 53.1% alcohol and it's out of the old and dignified flavor profile. So if you're used to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's flavor profiles, you know that old and dignified tends to be on whiskeys that are like 20 years, 25, 30 years old, not really 15 year old. So the fact that it's in this flavor profile is really interesting. And while it doesn't give it on the bottle itself, quick look online, you'll be able to find the cask types that go into this whiskey, which is first fill and refill Spanish Oak Oloroso, American Oak PX, and Bourbon Hogsheads. Enough about the stats on the bottle. Let's pour this one out and see what it's like. All right, let's first take a look at the color real quick. So you can see it's got a great color on it. Nice dark amber, definitely got that reddish hue to it. Almost like a copper look. Sit and look at the legs there. It's taking a little bit for them to come down. So it's got a bit of an oiliness to it, which I happen to like. I happen to like a nice oily mouth feel on things. So it'll be good. So we'll see what it's like when we actually give it a taste. All right, let's give it a little smell, see what we can get on the nose. So your first smell on it, you can tell it's not just a regular sherried whiskey. You can definitely tell there's some age on it because I think the fruits are mixing really well with the oak on here. There's a little bit of a funk. So I'm getting some of the fruit notes that you would expect out of it with it being sherry cask. So those dark red fruits. I'm getting more dried fruits out of this. Almost a little wet papery. I'm getting a lot of floral notes here on the nose too, which is nice. I've just been sitting here a little bit and opening up. I'm getting, a, I'm getting some citrus that's coming out of it. I'll tell you though, the nose on this keeps changing for me. There's a lot of depth to this. So it's definitely still got that musty smell to it. Almost like wet paper, wet wood, something like that. It's crazy though, because the nose keeps changing on me. Like, I think there's a lot of notes in here that I'm smelling that I can't really put a memory to or figure out. But there's a lot going on. I'm starting to get some leather out of that smell too. 
I was to take a lot of the smells that I'm getting out of it, with the, that wet wood and the leather, it's almost like a wet leather bound book. Let's see what it does on the palette. Wow, this palette's really interesting too. So on the first sip, I think I had a real quick taste of those buried in the dried fruits. But then I was really quickly greeted by a lot of oak. I'm definitely getting a lot of the wood notes out of it. Still getting some of that fruity spice like I was talking, like that citrusy type spice. And now as, as it's lingering here, that leather note is coming back as well. And it's relatively dry actually too. That palate keeps evolving too the more you sip on it. So from those fruits, you get some kind of caramels in there, but you still get those fruits coming forward. I feel like I could keep sipping this thing and it's gonna change every single time I sip on it. It's just really, really complex. Some of those fruits and spices stick around a little bit. Definitely the oak is sticking around. And it's one of those whiskeys that after you're drinking it and have a few sips, I feel like you gotta kind of lick your teeth. You know, that is kind of sticking around in your mouth there. So it's got a pretty long finish on it. So I'm gonna add a couple drops of water just to see what it does and if it opens this thing up at all. The water's definitely opened up the nose. It's much lighter. And you're still getting some of the fruits, but instead of the darker dried fruits, it seems a little bit more florally, a little more citrus. I'm also getting a little more nuttiness out of it too. The water changed the palate up quite a bit too. It's a little herbal, a lot more floral coming out of it too. Now on the finish, I'm having that licorice come through really hard. So my final thoughts here on this bottle from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, it's the Distillery 64 Rare Release Luscious Velvet. I really, really enjoy this bottle a lot. I think every time I've opened it, especially through this whole time I've had it here, the palate, the nose, everything kind of just changes a little bit here and there. I think being in the old and dignified flavor profile for this one fits it nicely because I think there's some notes that you get out of those older whiskeys, the 20, 30 year olds that are present here, but it's only 15 years, which is really impressive. As much as I love this bottle between the palate and the nose, I think there's a lot, a lot of complexity there that I feel like I'm still pulling apart every time I pour something out of this, but I feel like I wouldn't have it as a daily sipper. And the only reason being that because there's so much complexity in it, I feel like I kind of got to be in the mood to be able to drink and try and pull something out of it of complex whiskey. I don't know if my everyday sipper would be something that is this complex, but nonetheless, it is something that I'm, thoroughly enjoying. And yes, this is not yet another video where I'm looking at a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society release and think it's fantastic, but what are you gonna say? They put out great whiskey. But I think overall, if you're a fan of really good complex whiskeys and you like to be able to try and pull out different notes from the nose and the palate, this is 100% for you. So I know this was a special release and there's no more left on the website, but if you happen to get your hands on it, let me know down in the comments what you think about it. If you didn't get your hands on this specific bottle, but you had Distillery 64 in the past, let me know what you guys think. I happen to like this distillery a lot, at least everything that I've had from them, but I'd like to hear from you guys. Maybe you guys have had different independent bottlings. They didn't go so well. Let me know down in the comments. So I got a little bit left to finish up here. Then I'm going to go try and figure out why I keep thinking about a 1970s detective. But until next time, everybody stay curious and cheers.